I'm going to open up with It Is Wonderful. <laughs> I had to. I had to open up with It Is Wonderful. You know, you know, you see, this is a journey, you know. And we are here just to encourage each other. But we've got to find it all within ourselves. There can be beautiful words what you're hearing, but you've got to eventually hear it all within you. And what happens? You become the book. Like Jesus says, I am, I am the volume, the, you know, the volume. I'm coming in the volume of the book. We are the book. And so, because unto me a child is born, unto me a son is given. And what is his name? Wonderful. wonderful. So it can't be anything else but wonderful. Do you know now why I always say it's wonderful? And you know, it's the amazing grace. Ama you know, have you ever seen this? Have you read the story of John Newton, the one that wrote the song Amazing Grace? Do you know about his life? And when the, when the storm hit and he was going to drown, what happened? God saved him. And the song came forth, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. You know, because it saved me. It saved me. And see, and like he says, once I was blind, but now I see. See, but we know that we are beginning to see. Because we know it is so big, this God, it's just so wonderful and so amazing, amazingly beautiful. And that's what we were singing. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Now this one says to inquire in his presence. And that's what we are really doing, inquire in this presence. Because, see, God is, like Mike said the other day, he's not a man. God is not a man somewhere. I had to be set free from all those beliefs. And I'm still going to be set free for some more that are hiding in there. You know, and that one day will be, they will be exposed. And you say, where in the world did that come from? Yeah, right there. From where all these... Um, Minds go crazy. So, okay, so who is that? I just want to lay a foundation. I am a, a girl of foundations. I just love good foundations because then you've got a good foundation, your house is never going to be tumbling and falling. And that's the same with our house. We work for days and days and days to, to dig amongst the rocks and everything the foundation for our house in the, in the natural, okay? So God says, um, oh, I just want to read that. That is, uh, now I forgot, Psalm 89, uh, yeah, 89. Um, 89, I will just tell you. Righteousness and judges, judge. Not judgment, righteousness and justice are the foundation of my throne. Okay? That's the God that we are getting to know. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of my throne. You know? So that is the one that we are getting to know. So, the first, okay, another scripture I just like to start off with, and that is one of my favorites, if there is such a thing. Um, Genesis 49.10. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the law from between his feet, until he comes. It's already promised. And right there in Genesis, he was going to come. <coughs> until Shiloh comes. And Shiloh is that Christ wonderful presence and unto him or unto it we know now it's not a him okay because if you have a him you got a man okay so it's it so if you still have difficulty with that that's okay if you hear things that you 
you know, think, oh gosh, what's that? That's okay. Just okay. And so, unto it shall the obedience, one scripture says, uh, translation, other translation says, unto it shall the gathering of the people be, okay? And the other one is the obedience. But we've come out to the obedience. Obedience really is listening, hearing, hearing. The word, that word translated into Latin is the hearing. And you know, didn't Jesus say all the time, be careful how you hear? Didn't he tell us all the time to be hearing? And this is what's happening now. So I, Mike asked me to give a kind of a bit of a sum, summary over them meeting. So what am I going to share with you is the way I hear it. <laughs> and you might have been hearing something what I never heard. You know, because there was such an abundance of uh, love, such an abundance in these days that we've been listening, such an abundance of God being expressed. So I'm just giving you a little bit because I better have a little clock, I think, because sometimes I forget altogether how much time. So, okay. So the first gathering was uh, with our brother. And I better get my glasses too. So, the first gathering, what I was hearing, because I mean, if I would uh, share with you everything, we'll be here for another week. <laughs> yeah. And that's probably what would be very good. Yeah. I think that would be very good if we could get together for one week. But anyway, it's okay. Um, oh yeah, a really beautiful, the most important words in our vocabulary. That's what our brother spoke to me. The most important words in our vocabulary. Did we all hear that? And that was, I am. That, that is such a mighty revelation and that will all come to us. It's going to come to us. I'm sharing it now with you, just the words, you know, and the feeling of it. Get the feeling of it. But it's all going to come to every individual in this earth. All shall know me. And the only way we're going to know is when we're going to hear it from within. Every single person that walks this earth. It's wonderful. So that was so beautiful. Um, so in, the, in John chapter 3, in the message, all of you have had the, a read of the message where, it's, where Jesus speaks of being born again. You know, and I find that this brother, the way he puts that down is just so wonderful because he said, unless you go back where the Spirit was hovering over the water, unless you go back right to the beginning, you're not going to find out who you are. So we go right back to where God says to us, he looked at it and saw it was very good. And he blessed it. And he says, be fruitful. You know, Kathy, she did a wonderful message on this years ago about be fruitful. And she come out with it, I exist. And isn't that true? The I that I am exists forever. Not just a few days that we are here together. When you're home in a few days, if you're back home again, that is still the same, okay? Because you see, this is so uh, beautiful when we get together, we're away from all the obstacles that we are facing at home, okay? But you see, I exist still when we come home. 
Nothing has changed. And in reality, that's the only thing that is. Yeah. All that experience, what you're experiencing at home, is the tombstone. <laughs> that really, that really was good stuff. And um, okay, so we're still at the first gathering. Be fruit fruitful, I exist. That is truly the born again, born anew, go back to where it really all happened. And the other stuff is just like on the tombstone, you know? It doesn't really, it all, it all uh, vanishes away. And God has never changed his mind from Genesis 1 till today, okay? When he spoke those words to the day, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has never changed, okay? So that is then, that to me was sort of a tiny little bit of the first gathering. Then the second gathering was, uh, t to me, is so precious and so ooh, scary, but the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Now we have had all sorts of teachings on the lamb being slain, okay? So this is the time that we are moving on out of all that, what we've been taught and come again, come again. The word uh, what does it say in, I uh, forgot where it is, I know it's verse 16 somewhere, and it <laughs> says that the scriptures are for reproof, yeah. for correction and instruction in what? Righteousness. righteousness. Here we come again with this foundation of righteousness. What is righteousness? Okay. So that's, so, you know, we've had the most, like Mike and I, truth is shocking when at first, it can be shocking and it can be wonderful. I mean, when, when I really begin to understand that God is not going to throw anybody in hell and let them burn for the eternities, I mean, that was the best news I ever heard. That, you know, I mean, this is, gosh, 20, 30 years ago. And, you know, we had this girl come that was in our fellowship. We had uh, experienced something with you did. We had uh, about 100 come every Sunday. And when Tony began to share that, half of them left. They wanted the God of wrath. Yeah. Yeah. They were so used to this God of <laughs> wrath, I don't understand it because... I, I am not even in the full measure of understanding and experience of God. I would not want to see anybody burn. No. Even in, in that little bit of light that I have now. And God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all. And He is love. How could He ever, how could that ever have been the truth? And how many millions of beautiful brothers and sisters are still today yeah. believing that? It's awesome. That's why I get, I get so moved by this whole thing and by this God, you know, that we're all now coming out and, and come to know this true God. Oh, so beautiful. Okay, the second day, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now we've come to really understand that when, what's the lamb? Is that a, a lamb, an animal? They're all allegories, they're all beautiful yeah. stories that we may get some understanding, you know? And so, I mean, a lamb, oh man, how, how beautiful is a little lamb? It just jumps for joy. There's nothing wrong with it. It's pure, it's holy, it's so innocent. That's the lamb. What is it? It's the nature of God. And you, we were that nature of God. Okay, we were that nature of God until something happened. I don't think anybody knows yet. And we make Bible studies on what happened, and, but we're only really not really knowing. And I do believe that one day the Holy Ghost is going to tell us how did that happen, okay? 
So Adam all of a sudden says, I'm afraid. Now, is God, is that lamb afraid? It just jumps around. It never sees the lion that might want to uh, eat him up or something. It never sees anything, that little lamb. It just jumps for joy. That's all it knows. And all of a sudden, I'm afraid. And I trust that that is where the lamb was slain. Yes. You see, you know, the lamb was slain. It wasn't really killed. Okay, because we read that in Revelation. Though he was slain, okay, though, but he wasn't really. Because you see, that's what we used to believe in our early Pentecostal day, that the spirit is dead. And, and then we got born again. And like what, what you were sharing the other day, how is he going to come into me? How? And I used to think about that. I thought, where is this God that is going to come into me? He was there all the time. Yes. He was hiding. It says that. He hid in the darkness. Well, I was in darkness, I can tell you that. I was in gross darkness. And he was hiding in there all the time until it came out and began to be revealed, you know. So this lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. What do we get then? We're getting gods being created that weren't gods. Gods that that had to be sacrificed too because of the conscience. We were not we were always felt that conscience. And I used to think that that was God speaking to me. When I did something wrong, wacko, you know, with a big stick, I'd get a a, a blow out and God would give me a, a hit, you know. You see, because that was the conscience. You know, speaking to me that I'd done something wrong. It's the law. Can you see that? But I didn't know that then. That was with me for 10, 20 years. Who knows how long? You know, it's so amazing that we are coming. And you know, there is nothing physical or concrete that I can show you. I'm, sh I'm sharing things with you that are totally invisible. <laughs> can I tell you where, where this God is? The doctor can cut me open all over the place and never find me. What is it? It's so good. Oh, it is. Say that again. Say, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> what the doctor can cut me up, cut me open. He can't find me. Nobody can. Nobody can find me. Is it the mystery? See, Paul speaks about this mystery. But it, you know, to us, it's no longer a mystery that I see, we're seeing these things now, because we believe in a God that's invisible. In what is it, all the other words? I don't know all the other words. Okay. So, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Then we are getting this world is coming forth with all the gods in it. It's all, it's awesome. I know it's awesome. But it's okay. I'm still here. I haven't been, uh, you know. So, I'm still here. Because they used to, you know, this Pentecost, this Pentecostal uh, belief is actually very vicious because they, they will tell you God will kill you because you're telling something that is so uh, out of order. But to me, it's not out of order. Right. I can see it. It's as clear as crystal. You know, and that is righteousness. It's like crystal. It's so beautiful. And I like to read that from Revelation, you know, because you see, Oh, okay. Revelation, Revelation 5. Revelation 5, you all know the scriptures and my Bible is falling apart, so I hope everything will be just fine. So the elders, you know, can't you see a bunch of elders, you know, together? <laughs> the el and you know, another thing, the Revelation, it's all within yourself, okay? Yes. It's nothing out there. Out there. They're just all symbols. John saw all this stuff, and it's all the experience within yourself. Yeah. All right? And that's the same with the lamb. You know, he says, uh, the elders, oh, uh, the angel said to the elders, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and its seven seals. And I looked and behold, 
in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb okay though as though it had been slain okay you know having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent out all into the earth now okay brothers and sisters who is worthy to open that what is within us who is worthy could we do it with 10 easy lessons how to do it 10 <laughs> easy points how to do that no it's 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 a wonderful wonderful experience the lamb is already in here once we're coming to jesus we make a little step towards him and it begins the opening up begins within us it's all within ourselves opening up all these seals and opening up this lamb of god you're beginning to understand more and more and more that you are the offspring of god yeah 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 so that was uh Where's my paper? Here. Yeah. So, he's no longer slain, amen? He's awake and he's risen within us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, wonderful. So, it's all happening within. And then, <clears throat> uh, the third meeting was the tombstone. Oh, guys, I thought that was just so real what a beautiful um what a beautiful what do you call it symbol allegory allegory what a beautiful allegory that is in a few years there will be a tombstone martha you know born 37 and gone whatever and uh, whoever who know, whoever knows you know whoever who how do we know what's going to happen? But you know, we are living today with this beautiful, beautiful understanding. You know, once I was driving uh, in uh, where I live and, uh, and I was going towards my 70th birthday. And you know, I was driving there and through the beautiful country and I thought, wow, we come and we go. My parents, have come and they have gone. And what are we finding out here? I am so glad that I was born of a woman, born under the law. I'm so glad. I don't mind uh, doing my birthday because I know it's this time. So we all think about things, we all feel and live this way, the way it comes to us, you see? And I thought, now I have come here and thank God by his wonderful grace I am waking up that I am not this flesh and blood that I am not what says there on that tombstone <laughs> that I am past all that we are all past all that and it doesn't matter anymore it doesn't really matter anymore anything really because today we know Today, we, we are known the way we are known of God. Do you all understand that? Today, we know ourselves the way we are known of God. Do you know how God knows you? That came to me in 1980, when we were just coming out a deep, deep hole and didn't know anymore really where to turn it's always been like uh, david says hear my cry O lord attend unto my prayer and that was the forever prayer hear my cry O lord attend unto my prayer and see that comes to an end because sometimes then you, you, you experience that god doesn't really hear your prayer you know <laughs> so now a very good thing is happening now because now god says to you hear my prayer yes. he comes to us and he says hey wait a minute now it's time that you begin to hear my prayer 
okay? And that came to me, you know. And that was so, such a big revelation. Now, if you come from a Baptist background, which I did, and, um, oh man, poof. And, you know, God actually says to me, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. The same thing what he said to Jesus when he was being baptized. And um, I thought, oh, can that be true? God speaking to me? But he was, and he is, and he still is today. You are my beloved child in whom I'm well pleased. But you know, at that time, I was thinking, oh, Martha, you know. See, I didn't even know then yet the, the revelation that there is a, a spirit in me, that it is the Christ that he saw. God only knows himself. He was speaking, you are my beloved child, the Christ that is your true being. That is my beloved. Hear ye him. Listen to that Christ. Begin to listen to that, that Right? Begin to listen to that. And then, that is all the, the, the end of the tombstone. Then the, the revelation came to us that Jesus, who knew no sin, was made sin. That I, who knew no righteousness, was made righteous. That was the, that was the biggest change in my life. And, I be, and with that came the scripture in Isaiah 32, verse 17. The work of righteousness is peace. Now, I used to meditate on those scriptures for months. For months. The effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. My people will live in a peaceable habitation. And that word become flesh in me. I began to experience the peace of Jesus. Peace I leave with you, he says. My peace I give unto you. And I had to, I meditated on those for months and months on end. Also about you are my beloved child because there was too much in this head what are the heathen rage? The thoughts in your head, they, are, they were raging in here. How can you be a child of God? How can he be pleased with you? You know, but he's pleased with himself. Mm -hmm. And that is going to come forth. He's not pleased with Martha. She, she's on the tombstone. <laughs> she doesn't really exist. No. No matter what she does, if she's a good girl or a bad girl. I wanted always to be a good girl because I just wanted to be a good girl so God could be pleased with me. And then, you know, oh, and that was in the days when Tony was still drinking. And I open up my Bible and it says, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. And I thought, oh, Father, what are you saying to me? I just had to close the Bible. I couldn't, I, I could not understand it. I was trying to keep this family together, three kids, work, and he's just drinking every time, spending all the money on, on the booze. And then God, uh, God should say to me, you're a good girl, you yeah, see? Right. But that didn't come. <laughs> see how truth can be shocking? Yeah. When you don't really understand what God is saying, it's shocking. <laughs> it tears you apart. <clears throat> and I mean, that, that, that revelation didn't come straight away. I mean, that come years. Years went by until I fully began to understand what he really was saying. And I began to experience that righteousness, what, he, what God was talking about, had nothing to do with me. <coughs> it's just the gift from God. It's his nature, it's that lamb nature that is coming forth again. Oh gosh, and the work of righteousness, it saves my life, will be peace. And the effect of righteousness, assurance, and quietness forever. 
and look honey, we are living in the forever. And we are still having lots of experiences where we need to know this. We need to understand that God hasn't left us when things happen and we don't feel so good and so lovely, you know. Sometimes I don't feel very lovely. And so, you know, then he hasn't gone, you see. So, you know, that's, that's all the tombstone experience. It's there, all written down. But in a few um, centuries further, like Mike was saying about the grandkids, and they don't even remember that you were there. <laughs> See, now there's this great thing going on about your family tree. You know, yeah. that's not your heritage. Yeah, that's right. Gosh, yeah. let's, let's just go into this, what we are doing here. <laughs> And let's, um, let's dig into that heritage, you know. That is just so precious, and that is the thing that's forever, you know. Although I, I, I don't say I don't find it interesting. Sometimes you have these things on the television where people can see where they all come from, and it's all lovely and it's all interesting. But it's really all tombstone stuff, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not real, is it? So, you know, I mean, I'm going home, I tell you what, stirred up and uh, refreshed, and I think, Father, I want to hear your voice, because I haven't fully apprehended, like Paul, you know, haven't fully apprehended, and it's my desire to be able to see as God sees. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. that's what I want. I want to see all the time. Because sometimes I experience it, but many times I don't experience it. And I see other things, okay? But it is my, so we're going on to know God aright. You know, wow. and we go on. And that is the life eternal. Okay, gosh, what day was that? That was the third day. Oh, what's the time? Fourth day. So we are gathering together unto him. This is the thing. We are gathering together unto him or unto it, unto this beautiful presence of the Father that is just lifting us up now. The heavenly places, oh. And then the fourth gathering was no condemnation. And uh, Isaiah, a brother, he was uh, going from Isaiah 32. Oh boy, I love it. That's. Uh, Another one of my favorite chapters, because there's a lot more in there than the beginning. Oh, so beautiful. Mm, Isaiah. Isaiah 42, okay. 52. Isaiah 52. You remember it? I'm just a little bit too far here. Oh, like uh, my little sister there from, uh, from Canada, she says, she got a real, this little one there, she got a real revelation when Mike says there is only God. And you know, and she said, oh, blew me away. But then you begin to see it everywhere. Yeah. Yes. And, and that is so That's beautiful there. now. When you read, you see, you see it all over the place. It's so, so good. You know, in Isaiah, our brother began, uh, Awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments. O Jerusalem, the holy city. For in the, un for the uncircumcised, oh gosh. For the uncircumcised, there goes my notes. For the uncircumcised, say, it says, uh, and unclean shall no longer come to you, okay? So when these things start to race around again, you just say, oh, thank you, Father. The uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to me. And just stay there and just become still. I have to do that sometimes. 
be still and know that I am God. And then I'll say yes, Father. Because I know I've gone over the top again <coughs> with a lot of thoughts. <coughs> and I'll say yes, Father. I will know. I am knowing you are God. Okay? And then it says, shake yourselves from the dust. Okay? You're no longer from the dust. You're from the spirit. All right? You're a spiritual being. You're no longer from the dust. Okay? And then it says, um, I'll go down, down the page a bit. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Okay? Do you, are you knowing his name? There's only one name. I am. Okay? My people shall know my name. <coughs> Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. Don't you love it? Yeah. Oh, gosh. And then you know what it says then? How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them who bring good news. Hey? When you can bring this, is good news. Yeah. You know? And proclaim peace who bring glad tidings of good things, who, who proclaim salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Yes. And that's the only thing that's reigning. God reigns. And there's nothing out there anymore because in Ephesians 4 it says he filled the universe. So there's only God. Okay. So, you know, and the next... Because, you see, when I was a teenager and I was brought up in a Baptist church, uh, I could never understand why there were so many uh, beliefs, so many different churches. And, you know, my grandpa was in one church and that was kind of like uh, Dutch Reformed. We all know that very much in the law. And uh, my grandpa, I, he used to scare me, you know. And, uh, and uh, my mother became a Baptist. So my mother was never forgiven for doing that, see? And they lived with us, my grandpa and his grandma. So that was all very unpleasant. So I could never understand if there's one God, how come so many different beliefs? You know? And you know the Father, by his wonderful grace, you have a question in your heart, one day it's going to be answered. And he answered me, took me to the gate of righteousness. You know, and that's where it is. And there is no... No, no Baptist, no Pentecostals or anything. There is only God and his children. And, and that's what uh, Paul says. For this cause I bow my knees until the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named by just no name. One name, I am. And so that was so wonderful. So you know what this scripture says in Isaiah 42, uh, 52? It says, for they shall see eye to eye. And that is one of my desires, that we can all come together. And like what our brother says, three, three days and we've all speak the same thing. You know, because it's very disturbing if it's all different. Because you wouldn't even know where to go, would you? You know, but anyway, that was all in the process of coming to this. It's okay. I used to fight about what's true and what's not true. I've done all that. I, I've, I've been standing on the street and telling people, you know you're eternal, do you know that? And if you don't trust in Jesus, you're going to go to hell. I, I, I preached it myself. I didn't even believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the end, I did not really. In the end, I did not really believe that, that God would throw you in hell. So how come I said that? Of course, there's all what you've been taught from a child, you know? So it, we're living in the most wonderful day, I tell you. We're living in such a wonderful day when we are waking up. And we don't have to judge. Now, I'm still working on that one, okay? That, that I don't have to judge anymore. But I still judge at times. But now I know that I'm doing it. And I just, I realized this weekend I just need to get a deeper revelation about this whole thing, about God, the righteousness of God, 
you know. And then through, see, roots through, you can't do something and say, now I'm going to do this, because you won't be able to. You can't. It's got to come by revelation that causes you to change. Because the God, God is coming forth. God is doing it. You know, so I've got to, I've got to move on because, yes. So that was the fourth gathering, Isaiah 52. I'll make, I'll cut it short now. And then gathering uh, five, the fifth gathering, uh, the mystery no longer hid, okay? No longer is it hidden because we are getting to know it, even if we are a small bunch, but I mean, this is going on all over the world and it's going on all where nobody knows anything about it. It's just going on everywhere that people are coming to know and understand the true God. Isn't that right? Because that's what Jesus prayed and his prayer is going to be answered that you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ, his son, for that is the life. You know, that is the life. And so the sixth gathering, take care of your world. And uh, on that, you know, I just, I just need, and I'm thanking David and this beautiful girl there, taking all these messages. We are just so blessed. And in a few months, we can get these messages and we can sit at home and just listen to it again and again and again because that's really all I want to hear I just all I want to hear really you know sometimes you think oh I might like to do something else and you'll find there's really no no real good feeling in that really you know you can get sidetracked a bit sometimes but then you you realize again oh gosh this is not where I want to be and it's okay it's all a matter of growing and in the knowledge of God. And God is not in a hurry. He's forever. So we've got wonderful. It's just so wonderful. So, you know, I just loved, uh, uh, I just loved when uh, Mike read uh, on Gathering 6, take care of your world, he says. And that's all we have to do. Take care of our own world, where we live, yes. you know where we can have the opportunity to, to uh, present God. Because where's God? God is going to come out of you and me as, as his beautiful, beautiful presence. You know, that always calms the troubled sea. You know, and you know, sometimes, oh, when we first started, you know, also wanting to let go of the past. I mean, when we first got that word of righteousness, you know, I'd, I've shared that quite a lot of times, so a lot of you have heard that already. But just it was a turning point of my life, you know. Uh, I went, it, God showed me the gates of righteousness. Now, Karen, you all know we had the meetings at Karen's house. Some of you have been there. And she's got these great big gates, you know, these wrought iron gates. And I just see myself go up this drive and close this gate behind me. We argued, we tried to kill each other, you know, <laughs> we've, we've done it all, you know, and, and that's where it was at. The love, was there any love? Of course there was no love, what do you think? There was only hate and <laughs> trying to get rid of each other or trying to change each other <laughs> so that we can have a peaceful um, surroundings, you know, and you're so frustrated out of your mind because there's nothing you can do. There's not a thing you can do. And so I went up the gate of righteousness and, and we, we've all experienced terrible things in our life. People that have been so hurt that your whole insides is cut out. Yes. You, that's the feeling. And you know, and here comes God, you see? Love one another as I have loved you. Oh gosh, how do you do that? You can't do it. You can't do it. Okay, so close this gate of righteousness know that you be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what you are, okay? So, yesterday doesn't exist, okay? The tombstone is a good uh, confirmation of that. Yes. See, there is no yesterday. There is not even early this morning if you had an argument, okay? <laughs> See, this morning doesn't even exist anymore. Right. 
It's only now. God is always just now. And you don't have to feel bad if you had an argument or you've done something because you're either good or bad in this world. So close the gate. Everybody that's done something in your life, in your past, I mean, there's been some horrendous things. Some people have got some most shocking experiences in their lives and they didn't ask to be born there. You know, my little sister comes from uh, Sicily, not, not my little sister in the physical, but one of our sisters comes from Italy, Sicily. Now, you have any idea when she tells me stories? There is no yesterday. Do you want to forget? You know, it really hit me a few days ago when Jesus came to that pool of Bethesda and had all these sick people there. And he only heals one. And what does he say? Do you want to? Do you want to be made whole? Wow. He could have healed a lot. But he only healed the one. And he wanted to. The, the connection was there. Okay. Pick up your bed and, and get up. Do you want to? Do you want to forget the past? Hey? Eh? There's no yesterday. There's no 20 years ago. There's no 10 years ago. There's nothing. It's all gone. It's on the tombstone. It will be all on the tombstone. Here lies so-and-so with that experience. Oh, don't, you don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. So what are we coming? You know, what, what, what's this God that we are getting to know? And that's what Mike finished up with yesterday. One of the scriptures, uh, the two scriptures I like to finish up with. Because this is one of my, oh, I just love it. Jeremiah 9. Let not the wise man glory in his glory. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories, glories in this, okay, that he understands me. Okay, God wants us to understand him. And that takes the hearing. That takes hearing. Hearing what God says. You know, and what Tony was saying the other day, the foundation of understanding is the willingness to listen. We've got to become willing. That song, what these guys were singing, wasn't that just so precious? and so real, we've got an opinion. And we didn't even know that we were having this opinion. Aren't you glad for Jesus' prayer on the cross? He was hanging on the cross, brothers and sisters. He was bleeding. And they were all screaming their heads out there. Crucify him. And what does he pray? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. And I tell you the truth, if I think back on my human existence, I didn't know what I was doing. If I could do it again with my children especially, oh, I yes. didn't know what I was doing. So there is no condemnation, okay? It's gone, it's the past. Because, you know, when we came out of that, our children went through all this hell when they were teenagers. And, and some of them were having such a grudge against Tony. But you see, Jesus had forgiven him. Jesus had forgiven I wasn't behaving all that kind. Uh, only thing is I wasn't drunk, you know, but I wasn't, I wasn't behaving. I was just myself. I was behaving shocking. Yeah. Just as bad. Yeah. Just as there's no difference. No. I've been forgiven. He, so if our children want to be free, and they are free now, they can come to Jesus and, and have that experience. Everybody can come to Jesus if they're having a hard time and can't forgive somebody. They're just as bad. We're all the same. There's no difference. So it's a wonderful. To me, it's just all wonderful. And so, um, but let him glory in this that he understands and knows me. So let's go on. Let's go on and to get to know our Father, you know. And um, then, this is the Father. 
that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, justice, okay, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight. Amen. God delights in that, in loving kindness. Ooh, that can be, ooh, that can be <laughs> tough sometimes. But that's where it is. Okay, and now this last verse, what Mike was also sharing, and that is Revelation 21, because that is just so wonderful. If you really begin to get a hold of that, it's right now. It's not going to happen in the future. It's right here. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle, the presence, the temple is... Of God is with man and he will dwell with them isn't he dwelling with us right now don't yeah. you feel his Amen. presence he dwelled with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people God himself will be with them and be their God he is our God oh God and we all can testify to that and so okay I find still that there are many people crying crying a lot you know so I used to cry a lot too, you know. So, I mean, there's nothing, yeah, there's nothing what it says in here and what everybody else, that I haven't been myself. I've been there, done, I've been there. Only in some of the, the one I've never experienced is child abuse that I have never experienced. And a lot of uh, children have experienced that. So, but, you know, the Word of God, the Gospel is the power of God. The Word of God is the power unto salvation for everyone, regardless of your experiences. Yes, it is. And so God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. And we understand that too now. It's not the death of this physical body. That's what brother was saying. People uh, began to believe that they weren't going to die anymore in this physical frame. And that became so frustrated because they found themselves getting sick and getting to that point anyway. And that was a big, big frustration for these people because they hadn't fully understood, you know. So we, she, she understood again. See, it's understanding, you know. We must understand the way it really is. So in reality, we, we will never die anymore, but this physical frame is not eternal. This is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. The true me is going to, in, is the kingdom of God. Where is that? It's invisible. <laughs> it's not made with hands. It's eternal in consciousness, in our awareness. That's where it is, okay? It's eternal in our awareness. If we are aware of it, that's where it is. Invisible. A wonderful. Amen. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, no more death, okay? Nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. So, we could meditate on that. Meditate on that. Okay? For the former things have passed away. Then he said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. It is done. It's done. It's finished. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my people. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to overcome smoking, okay, or uh, kicking the cat. He who overcomes the belief that there is something else beside God. He who overcomes that feeling that there is still something else out there. Okay? We come to the understanding and we are all coming. There's only God. And God fills the universe. Okay? So I would just want to thank you all. You have all been so precious been and you are and you always will be you know thank you for coming thank you for listening and um, I just want to thank Mike and Diane because uh, beside yes. okay
now he starts frowning. Uh, and so because it, they are so gorgeous, and beside this wonderful spiritual opportunity we have of hearing, okay, and coming together, beside that, they make a barbecue, and they take us on a ride in the boat, and do all these other lovely enjoyment things uh, around it all. So I really appreciate you both. Very, very, because I mean, there's a lot involved. And I just thank you. And I just thank all of you guys, because we just need to be together, you know, for this to happen, for this to come out, and to encourage each other, always. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. And sorry if I kept it too long. Okay.